Welcome everybody. In this session, we're going to continue on with inflammation, um, but this time we're going to talk about some other bowel disorders and the medications to treat those. Our objectives are to explain pharmacolo pharmacology of constipation, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. We're going to talk about the nurse's role in pharmacological management. We are going to look at some prototype drugs and again talk about the nursing process and patient education. Constipation is infrequent passage of dry hard stools and typically a symptom of another underlying condition. Um, commonly caused by um, lack of exercise, decreased fiber um, intake, decreased fluids, decreased activity or motility of the bowels, and of certain medications, food, or other diseases um, can cause medication, um, can cause constipation. Laxatives are usually used to tr treat or prevent constipation or they could prepare the bowel for surgery or certain procedures um, and they promote emptying of the large intestine. Sometimes stimulants or herbal agents are used and this is going to increase peristalsis. Um, mineral oils is another common one and this is actually going to lubricate fecal masses to help passage of stool. So in this presentation, we're going to do things just a little bit different than the last one. The last time I gave you the prototype drugs and kind of ran through a few things. Um, for this one, what I want you to do is I want you to look at your text. I want you to look at your prototype drug. I want you to create a med sheet, med cards, a med concept map, whatever appeals to you. And I want you to list out specific things that are important in relationship to Metamucil um, using the bullets on this slide as a guide. And if you like to, you can go ahead and post those in the Prep for Exam 2 forum and then we'll kind of look over those and we can keep talking about them. Diarrhea occurs when the colon fails to absorb enough water. Um, what you'll see is an increase in frequency or fluidity of bowel movements. It is a type of body defense that's trying to, excuse me, eliminate toxins, possibly pathogens, and can eliminate certain meds or get infections out of the body. If diarrhea is prolonged, it can lead to fluid, electrolyte, and acid-base imbalances, and these could become life-threatening. Treatment's going to depend on the severity and the etiology or the cause. Um, we're going to focus on the opioids that get used for severe diarrhea. These are most effective, and these are going to kind of slow peristalsis, which is going to help um, the frequency and the bowel movements. So there's lots of medications you can give for diarrhea. I want you to focus for the purposes of this course on a specific medication called Lamotil. Now again, Lamotil is one of the ones that have like an opioid in with it. So I want you to go ahead and I want you to make a med sheet with this medication. I want you to work through what's it used for. What things do you need to consider during, before, during, or after administration? What type of side effects or adverse effects will come with this medication? Is there anything that's a contraindication? Um, what interactions do you need to teach your client about? Um, what labs do you need to monitor? What herbs or foods that could be contraindicated or could pose a problem and is there any overdose if with this particular medication. Nausea and vomiting, uh, most specifically vom vomiting, is defense mechanisms, um, kind of rid the body of toxic substances. Um, the vomiting center is in the medulla of the brain. There's many conditions that can cause nausea and vom vomiting to include infectious processes, poisonings, psychological factors, pain, potential changes in body positioning, or medications. And, and that's really important because medications, their nausea and vomiting as a side effect of medications are one of the biggest reasons why people stop taking them. 
Ultimately, excessive vomiting can result in severe dehydration, weight loss, fluid and electrolyte, acid-base imbalances, or eventually vascular collapse. To treat mild or moderate nausea, um, you can do that with over-the-counter drugs or herbal options. Um, when it gets moderate to severe, a lot of times we'll do prescription drugs. Um, there's a list of them here, um, but we're going to focus on the pheothiazines, um, one that you're going to see very much in practice. All right, so compazine, um, this is usually used for psychosis, but it can also be used as an anti-emetic, and it's, it's very common um, in med surge floors. It is the largest group of drugs used for nausea and vomiting, and it works by blocking the dopamine receptors in the brain, which then is going to inhibit those signals to the medulla, which is that vomiting center. Administration considerations, you want to make sure you give this two hours before or after other anti, um, antacids or antidiarrheals. Adverse considerations, this medication can have an anticholinergic side effect. So I want you to go ahead and look up and reflect back on what anticholinergic um, side effects are. With higher doses, um, this medication can start manifesting and resembling extra pyramidal symptoms. So when, when you hear that, EPS, I want you to think Parkinson's, and I want you to think that that's serious, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. This does have a black box warning. Um, there's an increased risk of death with our geriatric clients who have dementia because they may be being treated with other conventional phenothiazines. So therefore, if you add this on top of it, now you're just compounding that effect. Contraindications, again, don't use with hypersensitivity. Do not use if a client is comatose or has profound CNS depression and do not give this with clients that have severe hepatic or cardiac impairment. Drug-drug interactions, again, don't use it with alcohol. That's pretty much for everything. And be mindful and please try not to use it if they're using another CNS depressant because that's going to make it worse. No lab considerations at this time, no herb food considerations at this time, and if a client needs an overdose treatment, if they are experiencing um, extra pyramidal symptoms, then you're going to want to treat that with an anti-Parkinson drug. Um, if they are having CNS depression, then you would want to give a CNS stimulant. When we're thinking about the nursing process and client education, a lot of this is very similar um, to other medications, especially when we're thinking about assessment and reassessment. <clears throat> so when we're thinking about um, assess and reassess, this could be similar to other clients when we're talking about pharmacology. Diagnoses, certain ones that are very important with these clients are going to be decreased fluid volume, especially if they're vomiting, um, risk for falls, and risk for injury. Your planning process is still going to be the same. You still need to think about the medication that they're on and what they're treating it for and make goals or outcomes with your client. What's important on this is implementation or interventions, and this is going to go right into our teaching. So for interventions, um, basically before you do any farm, you want to treat the cause of the nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. Do something like trying to avoid what's causing it. <clears throat> um, if the client is allowed liquids or ice, make sure it's in small doses. Um, and sometimes ginger ale may help. Um, if movement is issue that's causing nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, try to limit movement. We want to make sure that we take antiemetics proactively. So for example, if the client knows that they get nauseous and vomiting in the car or on a boat, then they want to take something ahead of time so it doesn't happen. If your client's going for chemotherapy, chemotherapy is known to cause nausea and vomiting. So you want to get them an antiemetic prior to their treatment. 
safety is always a concern. Um, so when clients are having nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fluid and electrolyte balances, whatever the case may happen, they may become dizzy. So what do we want to tell our patients? If you're lying down or sitting, do your movements very slowly. Make one adjustment and if you get dizzy, wait until that dizziness passes and then move on to either sitting or standing. We need to make sure we tell clients to report for any increased gastric pain. More pain is never a good thing. Um, however, if the pain gets severe, and again, severe is pain is subjective, but severe pain or if there is blood in emesis or stools, they need to seek medical attention immediately. Always make sure clients get follow-up lab work, especially if they're going to be on a medication um, that's going to alter any type of labs. Let's talk about diet. If a client has nausea or vomiting, MPO. Do not eat anything until that passes. It really doesn't make any sense. If I've got vomiting going on, I don't want to eat or drink anything because it's just going to come back up. When you get the okay to advance the diet, you want to do it as tolerated if it's ordered. Stay hydrated, especially with nausea and vomiting. Again, small sips of water, small ice chips, um, things of that nature. <clears throat> when we're looking at constipation, what are those nursing interventions we want to teach our clients to do? Increase fiber, increase fluids, increase activity. Um, and again, if they are experiencing any constipation and those bowel movements are not regular for them and, you know, it could be one a day for somebody every day and once every three days they're regular. But if they have constipation, pain, abdominal distension, um, lack of bowel movements that are not normal for them, they need to go ahead and seek um, medical treatment. If there are any questions related to this presentation, please go ahead and post them in the Prep for Exam 2 forum, and I look forward to seeing your questions.